I bring in now Clint Hill, a former U.S. Secret Service agent for President Kennedy, who was in the presidential motorcade when the president was killed. Uh, Clint, I can't thank you enough for being here with us. Um, and I want to just set up your story a little bit, because sure. these are some now iconic photos. You're climbing on top of the presidential motorcade. Let's pull them up here. You're essentially pushing First Lady Jackie Kennedy out of the way to protect her. Uh, that's you. Can you just take a moment and walk us through that day? Well, we had this motorcade into Dallas because uh, the president was going to make a speech at a place called the Trademark. Yeah. And the whole trip was based on maximum exposure because uh, Kennedy and Johnson wanted to make sure they could uh, get as big a vote in Texas in 1964 as possible mm -hmm. because they needed it. So we started out from Love Field, we drove into the city, and the crowds got larger and larger and larger, and they were just immense. Yeah. Larger than anybody anticipated. And as a the Secret police. Service agent, you're looking at that. Well, we were, and uh, we at that time were a little understaffed because of a number of transfers that had just been made to the field, and we had some very pretty young, raw agents working on, on yeah. and important positions, and uh, that was difficult. But we got through the crowd okay. I got up in the back of the car a few times because of the driver keeping the car closer to the left-hand side of the street where Mrs. Kennedy was on the left, or keeping the president away from the right of the crowd. Okay. Uh, we were in a place called Digley Plaza. And I was on the running board of the follow-up car right behind the president's car. Left-hand side, I was scanning the whole area, and all of a sudden I hear this explosive noise over my right shoulder. Came from the rear. I didn't did you know, know what it was right I away? did not know what it was. I, it was just an explosive noise. It could have been a firecracker. I wasn't sure what it was. So I started to turn toward the noise, but I only got as far as the president's vehicle because I saw what happened. I saw the president grab at his throat like this, and then he started to fall mm. to his left. And I knew then that it was a gunshot. So I jumped from my position and started to run to the president's car with the intent of getting up on top of the back of it to form yeah. a shield there to protect both President and Mrs. Kennedy. And just as I got to the president's car, just as before I got there, another shot hit uh, the president in the head. He at that time was l leaned way over to his left, and Mrs. Kennedy's face was right against his. And the shot actually hit him back here, but it erupted out of the upper right quadrant yeah. of the rear of the head, and there was brain matter and f bone fragments and blood all over me, all over the car, all over Mrs. Kennedy. And at that point, she came up in the trunk. She was trying to grab some of the material that came out of the president's head. And she did get in some of it in one of her hands. And uh, she didn't even know I was there. I grabbed her and put her in the back seat. When that happened, the president's body fell to its left into her lap. His head was right in her lap. Right side of his face was up. I could see his eyes were fixed. There's a hole in the skull, and I could see in that hole there was no brain matter left whatsoever. So I assumed it was a fatal wound. I turned and gave a thumbs down to the follow-up car and screamed at the driver, get us to a hospital. Yeah. And he immediately accelerated, and, uh, and we ended up at Parkland Hospital. And you were on top of Mrs. Kennedy? At I laid up on top of the back of the top seat, top, right on the back seat, uh, to cover both President and Mrs. Kennedy during the entire trip to the hospital. I ask you to walk through this, Clint, and I know you've done this, you've talked about it. I can't imagine it gets any easier to talk about. Not really. When moments like this happen, with the release of these documents, there's increased interest in what people are already very interested in, right? Sure. The story of President Kennedy, of Jackie Kennedy, this, this couple, this family that was so important to Americans. What is it like for you in this moment when the attention is back on the Kennedy files, on the assassination, on this obviously sort of indelible moment in your life? What's it like for you? Well, I'm anticipating what's in the files myself, because uh, I really don't know I have a general idea of what it is, okay. because it's coming from the stuff that was kept was uh, secret, was stuff from most of the intelligence agencies, the FBI, I suppose some of the things from the Secret Service. So it's going to be that kind of material that uh, I'm hoping that within that material, and there's lots of it, there'll be some indication as to the motive, the reason why he did what he did, and his... Uh, the background in the previous period of time prior to November 22nd, right. uh, whatever the FBI or the CIA or whoever, what they knew about it and what they recorded about it. 
you tweeted uh, recently, responding to some conspiracy theories this week. I know what I saw, heard, felt that in addition to all the evidence I've seen, points to one shooter, Lee Harvey Oswald. Three shots, all from the same position. Do you expect what's coming out today to convince any conspiracy theorists of that who might not already believe it, or do you think no matter what, people are going to believe what they want to believe? Well, the the real diehard conspiracy theorists, you're not going to change their mind. Yeah. Now I've gone around and talked around the country and. Sometimes someone will come up to me afterwards and say, you know, I really was a conspiracy theorist. I really thought it was a, a bigger up yeah. thing that happened. But you've convinced me that uh -huh. there was only one shooter. Very quickly before I let you go, back in 1975, in your first interview of 60 Minutes, you told Mike Wallace you blamed yourself for the death of the president, that if you reacted five tenths of a second faster, the president would be alive. Have, you, have your feelings changed over the years? Not really. Deep down, I still have that sense of guilt that I should have been able to get there quicker and I didn't and uh, all of the agents that I worked with have that same sense that they wished that they had been in my position because I was the only one who had a chance to do anything. Um, you did what you could and I appreciate you joining us here well, on thank set, you. Clint, to talk about this with this back in the news today. You. I appreciate you sharing your story. Uh, hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.